Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to this panel discussion, the second uh, of our evening. Um, my name is Farah Nayeri. Uh, I'm a journalist for the New York Times covering culture, and I'm also an author. Um, this session is called, as you know, More Than Words, The Future of Arabic Typography. Now, 30 years ago, typography was not something that someone like myself would really think about, know about, be interested in really, or concern herself with. It was really the preserve of graphic designers, of which we have three examples here sitting with me, um, brand experts, visual identity specialists. Um, these were the kinds of people who um, were concerning themselves with uh, something called typography. Now, today in the Western world, fonts, typefaces, and typography have become a cultural battlefield in the Western world. There are now 200,000, if not more, typefaces or fonts in circulation. It's just an extraordinary number, and people fight over them uh, on YouTube, uh, in blogs, uh, in the internet, on social media. I mean, people have really, really nasty fights. There's a lot of mudslinging going on. Some people like this font, the other people like the other font. And fonts, of course, as you all know, range from Garamond, which I think dates back to the 16th century, believe it or not, to something called Comic Sans, which everyone, for some reason, hates. It's this font that was created in 1994 and that everyone fights about um, because they think it's too informal, too sloppy, etc. So typography in the West is a big issue. Now in the East, what about in the East and what about in the Middle East, which is the region in which we find ourselves? Um, somehow typography is far less debated, it's far less developed. I think that those two are actually related. Um, when Dubai came up with a font for itself, its own Arabic font, which is called Dubai, and which you will find in Microsoft Office if you go into the drop-down menu in Arabic, that made headline news, and that was one font. So fonts are few and far between, I would assume, in the Arabic language and an Arabic script, even though Arabic script is an absolutely essential cultural element and component of the identity of the Arabic speaking world and of the Persian speaking world to which I belong and to which my neighbor belongs as well. Um, both of us are from across the water in Iran. And uh, I just wanted to start the discussion by turning to my colleague, um, to my friend uh, sitting next to me here, Shima Aynedar. Welcome, Shima. I just wanted to know, to hear from you, Shima. Uh, I wanted to ask you this big question, because graphic design means a lot to you three, all of you here. And Arabic typography and developing it means a lot. And I think that you're trying very much to make sure that Arabic typography becomes a kind of language of contemporary design and contemporary art. And so that's something that you really would like to strive for, and it's something that's very difficult because it's not really happening right now. So I'd like to pay, play that devil's advocate and turn to you, Shima, and say, you know, why should we care about typography in Arabic script, Persian script? I mean, why does it matter? I know it's a very broad question. If you want, I can narrow it down. No, no, no. I think uh, it's an interesting question. Yeah. And um, I would say language for me, it's, um, it's beyond writing. And for my, for my work personally, um, the reason why I use typography is because it creates this um, visual and, and written experience. And I think that takes, um, that can take graphic design to another level. 
because you can communicate visually and verbally. And I think there are so many, um, so many different opportunities for, for designers to explore this, this field. Also and because it's very beautiful, right? Per absolutely, I mean, calligraphy, yeah. Persian calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy, mm -hmm. it's actually beautiful to look yeah, at, yeah. even if you can't read it, right? Absolutely. It yeah. creates beautiful shapes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the, 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 um, the forms, it's, it's so much more um, flowy compared to uh, Latin typography, right. which I think, um, I'm probably biased, but <laughs> I think there's so much more, um, uh, so, so many more um, opportunities to, to create um, work that can be more impactful. Mm -hmm. As an artist, you know, and as a designer, you yeah, mean. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yes. And so I want to bounce that question over to you. Um, you're Zainab al Shibani, also a graduate of Virg uh, Virginia Commonwealth University here in Qatar in graphic design. Uh, Zainab, I wanted to ask you the sort of the same question why should we care about you know, uh, Arabic typography becoming more developed as a language of art and design? Yeah, I think I sort of uh, started falling in love with the Arabic script and the Arabic typography when I started taking classes specifically in Arabic calligraphy. And the person who was teaching me the scripts and, and uh, all the intricacies that go into formulating the, the letters had actually went into a whole program and a whole school just to get an understanding of how the Aleph should look like. And so... Alif, Alif is for is those the, of you who don't know, it's is the first letter of the alphabet. Yeah, exactly. And so I guess it could be like A, I suppose. Yeah. And um, when I just saw the passion and the way that he was talking about the letters and the way that the artisans and the calligraphers had spent most of their lives developing these letters and trying to make them as beautiful as possible, I think I saw it as like my pers personal mission to bring that to the public. And when you ask what it, what, what is, why should we value that Arabic script, I would say, why shouldn't you value the script? Why okay. shouldn't you um, think about your language in a beautiful way and in a more intricate way? Cool. What about you? What would you um, your name is Sarah Al-Afifi. Welcome to you, Sarah. What, what, what's your answer to this question of why should we care? Of course, we have to care about uh, the Arabic uh, script because the Arabic language is an extraordinary language. It's a beautiful language. It's a language of religion. It's a language of mysticism. It's a language of law. And it was also a language of science back in, the, in, back in time when, uh, in the, during the Golden Age. And, uh, and in that time, like in the past, people would work hard to you know, speak Arabic and write in the Arabic script because they needed to communicate in this universal language. And uh, since now, um, but now things have, uh, things became different and now English is the prominent language. Uh, English is the language of science, is the language of knowledge and if we, if we want to pursue uh, um, a good education then we need to, then we need to learn English, right? And uh, so that, so that, uh, so I, I don't, I don't see an, an issue in that. But also, uh, we have to, we have to bring Arabic into the scene because we want people to know more about the Arabic language. We want people to see how beautiful the Arabic language, uh, and how, I mean, it's it's such a poetic language, and uh, and uh, also speaking about the forms, uh, how Zena was. It's talking about um, that it, it really it really takes a, a lot of time to master the the writing of the of the Arabic script, and that by itself was also a big issue back in the 50s when they there was like this uh, trial of uh, trying to modernize the Arabic script and make it a script that fits uh, to be typed in the machines, you know, and uh, so. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, but but then there was like some attempt to make it to, to make the Arabic calligraphy become like a font, and and we have fonts now, sure uh, just but they are few, as as you said, and we are hoping that there will be more fonts, 
uh, more fonts that uh, represent that are more that they're not too structural they're not too they they don't try to match the western uh, alphabet but more of uh, fonts that um, captures the beauty of the arabic calligraphy cool and yeah. so, so so why are there so few fonts then shima explain to us why we live in a world here in the middle east uh, where you know the script is not really developing in these directions like it is in the West? Um, I think like, history definitely plays a role. Um, in what sense? Like um, we, were the, we were vanquished and we weren't the victors or? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, like in general, the Arab region, the, the history of Arab um, t graphic design in general doesn't have uh, a long history right. uh, in the region and specifically with typography because of uh, political issues in the past, there has been this, um, I would say, neglect with um, kind of giving Arabic typography the importance that it needs. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, there's this, for, for a very long time, there was this deficiency with the sophistication of, in, in Arabic typography. And so we're kind of because behind. Like, because, because for political reasons, you didn't want too much printing press or too much stuff being printed? Is that for political reasons or is it for other reasons? Um, I'm not sure exactly what the, the reasons were, but um, the gap was, was long enough for us to, to be behind right. in the industry. And um, yeah, I, I would say, Nowadays, definitely, we're, we're a lot more um, aware of, of the importance of Arabic calligraphy and, and mm -hmm. Arabic typography. And um, designers from, from the region, mm -hmm. they are um, paying close attention to, to the history and, and how they can use the essence of um, Arabic um, calligraphy to create beautiful fonts, but at the same time respond to um, the needs that we have right. for our typography. Okay, so uh, Zainab, I mean, to carry on from, to follow up from what we just heard from Shima, um, Shima says, you know, that this is kind of a new, fairly new domain that hasn't really been developed very much, right? And my understanding is from uh, conversations with Basma uh, that, um, there are hurdles, there's a kind of obstacles, there's, there doesn't seem to be a lot of resources poured into this. Can you explain some of the challenges uh, of Arabic becoming more of a language of design and art? I think it, it mostly the challenges are technological, but also a lack of understanding of all the things that have to go into creating a font or an Arabic typeface. So what, what do you mean by technological? I thought we had a lot of technology. Yeah, but it's all set up going. for supporting Latin typefaces. Because the Arabic is a connected script, yeah. we have a lot of kashidas, we have, we have a lot of variables, including the diacritics, and all these little nuances that are often neglected when people are developing uh, technologies that support typefaces. Like, there are a lot of computers that simply cannot handle the, the breadth and the width of uh, what it takes to hold an Arabic typeface. I see. So that's really kind of, yeah, that is a pretty big obstacle. So how can we overcome that? I think there's a lot that has been done. I know of a lot of apps that have created kind of plugins that can help with that issue. But it's also the idea that not a lot of students are getting uh, the education that they need to, de to develop their own typefaces. Okay, so you, you, know, you think universities, schools, et cetera, need to do more in terms of teaching calligraphy to start with and then developing fonts and... Yeah, I think, I think it would be too hopeful to say teaching calligraphy because that yeah. would take like a couple of years to master, but yeah. certainly giving them the, the background on each uh, calligraphic style and how they can implement it in their work. Yeah, I mean, not to bring myself into this too much, but I remember my grand, okay, my father had um, extraordinarily beautiful handwriting and having great handwriting was part of 
being a culture, like you, you couldn't be a kind of like properly educated person, right? His generation, if you didn't have also proper handwriting. And my handwriting in Persian is embarrassing. I mean, it's, um, I like, write like a 14 year old because I left Iran pretty much at that time. And, uh, but what I mean is my grandmother used to do these, you know, write these um, words and then I would sit there and try and copy them. And it was really difficult as you say, you know, I, I, again, I hate to bring myself into this, but I can attest to how difficult it really is to master calligraphy. Um, do you, how's your handwriting? <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I try to, um, yeah. kind of, uh, I would say copy because I'm not really good at it, but um, what you're referring to is Khatta Tahrir, right? Yeah. It's like a, a more simplified version of Nastali. And um, uh, my parents are not really good at it either, but I was, I was um, um, lucky enough to have the class and, and back in school. Uh, but again, it was it was very difficult, and we we had the class for for many years, and only people who um, were actually passionate about it would would succeed, and they would have to, of course, um, practice on the side. It's right. definitely very difficult to work with. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, but the point here is that you guys are designers, right? You guys are designers. You're on the cusp of art and design and all of those things. And so, what is it that you would like to see? You know, I mean, Sarah, what, what is it that you'd like to see? Like, in an ideal world, what would we be seeing? We'd be seeing these artworks, like sculptures that were, would have calligraphic shapes, or what is it that you're looking, that you want to achieve, you know? Mm, okay. Um, <clears throat> there is one point I want to sure. I want to add uh, on what Zainab was talking yeah. about, and I want I want to say that uh, if we want pe if we want organization, or if we want people to be uh, more interested in the Arabic uh, typography, then they need to be interested in the Arabic language itself, and I would say this this could be uh, the issue like. I want to say that, for example, when, when, I, was, when I was a kid, I learned uh, Arabic calligraphy and, uh, during school, and I, also, I was really good at it, but then suddenly they canceled it. And I was like, why? Why would you cancel something that, is, that, should, be so, uh, that should be so very important? Because uh, why not? Why sh we should be able to write properly uh, in Arabic. And, uh, and I, f I felt like there was like this uh, sudden neglect of the Arabic language, and then suddenly there was like this focus on the English, and suddenly our schools switched to English, and now we need to right. learn uh, math and science and English because I don't know whatever reasons are, but that, but but this is this is a very uh, that this created a big issue and a clash of identities because now uh, we have students who speak English and they are Arabs and they can't even write. Uh, an email in Arabic, in, a, in an Arabic country, uh, when uh, when the Emir said that the first language is the Arabic language, so we, so if we want people to be interested in the Arabic typography, then they need to learn uh, about the Arabic language. They need to learn about the history of the Arabic language and how beautiful it is, and how um, extraordinary it is, and how it was once uh, a form of resistance back in uh, when, 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 these, when these lands were colonized. And it was very hard for the colonizers to, to speak our language, you know? And uh, so, when, so when, the, when the locals, when the, when the Arabic audience learn about these things, of course they will be interested, of course they will be proud. Like we, we I, like all of us, I mean, we, are, we can speak the second hardest language in the world. This is by itself is something very important that we should cherish. I know, I've tried know? to learn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, I mean, Zainab, I'd like to hear from you. I really do want to hear from you. I understand that these are very important points that, that you just made, you know, that, that, that the Arabic language is, 
is absolutely fundamental. It is the language of the Quran. It is an extraordinarily beautiful and beautifully structured and grammatically perfect language. But I want to know about art and design. We got to go back to that. And, you know, you got to tell me, Zainab or Shima, you know, what we need to do because you guys can start making yeah. your designs using all kinds of calligraphic forms. You don't need to wait for Microsoft or somebody to provide it to you, right? Yeah. I think that uh, for me, uh, what I feel very passionate about is to start taking the variety of the Arabic script seriously. Uh, I feel that as designers and as even freelance uh, designers, we face the difficulty of being considered as an afterthought to whatever design project is being tackled. So if, for example, there's a new initiative or there's a new kind of thing that's happening in Doha, it's always like, we've designed the whole brand, we've designed the whole logo, bring in an Arab designer to, make the, right. to translate the logo for us. And I think that's a major issue because when you're looking at Qatar, which is, as Sara said, the first language is Arabic, what does it mean that the Arabic script is a second to right. whatever else is happening? It should be integral to the creative process. Exactly. And it should be respected as, as its own art form, and it shouldn't be something that's part of like an open call, like put in your work and see how it goes. Yeah. It should be something that's taken a bit more seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah, you were saying. Yeah, um, I definitely uh, agree with uh, Zainab. And I think um, the fact that um, in the region, or I would say specifically in Qatar, local designers are not given the opportunity that they deserve, it's, it's, it's a missed opportunity because we have something that we can offer that designers and companies from outside cannot offer. Um, for instance, I, um, I was commissioned to do an illustration book recently by Qatar Museums, and it's, it's, it's for Liwan, which is an old um, school. And even though I didn't go to Arabic, Arabic school, I had this um, perspective of, of someone who lived here and, for example, who went to school had, who, that had the similar architecture, or I went to school where students had the same experience. And so I had, as an illustrator, I had this um, perspective that someone from outside wouldn't have. Yeah. And so I think this is something that institutions in, in Qatar need to, need to realize, that there is something that, there's a lot that we can offer. Yeah, I mean, and I think all be. three of you are saying in the previous panel were saying that um, perhaps we have been bringing in a lot of art, design, and talent from the West, from Europe, from America, but we also have some talent homegrown that perhaps we could be, you know, developing more or paying more attention to or devoting more resources to, right? Yeah. Totally. yeah. Okay, the one issue, of course, is that the Latin script and the English language is a language um, that is of communication. You know, it, it's um, like people always say to me, oh yes, well, China's gonna rule the world. It's like China has a major communication problem because we all need to learn Mandarin and that's excruciatingly difficult. Whereas to learn English is, you know, to write English, English script, English uh, typography, all of, it's all very kind of, it's simple. You know, the, the, the letters don't join up, they, they can be printed, whereas in Arabic, the letters need to be joined up. So there is a kind of complicated um, nature in, to Arabic script, which m does make a challenge. What do you think? Uh, I think when I, when I heard you say, the, talking about the difficulty of the Arabic script, and then I was thinking about the first project we had in one of our typography classes, which was taught by Basma Hamdi and Daniel, we had this, uh, uh, we were proposed to either design a Latin typeface or an Arabic typeface. And I remember that me and Shima were super excited about getting to tackle designing an Arabic typeface. And 
it did take us a while to, to understand the processes and how the letters connect and how we can formulate them. But I, I'd hate to say that, it, like I would never say that it was impossible, it wasn't. It's something that is, uh, it should be expected from a graphic design student and anyone who is, de who is designing in the region. And I remember that I did design the Arabic typeface and that took me two weeks. And to design the Latin alternative took me about two days. And so that's the difference in difficulty, but that doesn't mean that it's, it's extremely hard. It just means that it requires a lot of attention. So what is it that you guys need? What do you need? What do you need to do more of this, what, this, what you just described? You need more funding, you need more attention from, uh, from schools, universities, art academies. What is it that's required? What's missing here? I think I would say that the support is missing. Like, if I do des design a typeface, how would I get it on the market and all these different processes? And maybe uh, if we could get the knowledge on how to get it out there, it would be helpful. Right, because as graphic designers right now, you're doing all these graphics, but you can't really do too much calligraphic graphic because it's not gonna find a market. Exactly, and I would say even the financial support is unfortunately not there. And okay. I'm talking at the level of like open calls and things like that, people always expect graphic designers and Arab graphic designers to just be designing for free. Design that typeface and we'll just take it and that's, your, that's all you get, that we take it. Exposure. Exactly, <laughs> exposure, and that's all you get. But that exposure doesn't pay the bills. Exposure doesn't get me dinner at night, you know? Like, it, it has to be a lot more serious than that. Whereas if you were doing it in uh, like a um, typeface, like Western typeface, then that's, you'd get paid more? You would get a foundry, you would get an office space at least to work on, on your design, but here it's unfortunately not, not as developed as that level. Right, fascinating. We have 14 minutes left. I'm going to carry on, but I would love to open this up to con uh, any questions that you might have in the audience because this is something that touches many people here. I'd love to hear from you. Please do introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. Um, Amir Burbich. I'm the Dean of Virginia Commonwealth University uh, School of the Arts here in Qatar. And firstly, I want to say um, how proud I am of uh, my students and alumni of VCU in Qatar on this panel, but also in the, in the previous one. Uh, and I'm so, forgive me that this is a sort of a self-serving question, but I wanted to ask you about the kind of design education that you have received and how relevant it has been in your thinking around this subject. How well have we done in respect to Arabic typography uh, or um, other matters that are uh, related to contextual relevance of being, living, and working in this, in this world. Yeah, how well has VCU done? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think for me personally, um, I, I entered VCU um, thinking that I'm gonna get like a purely Western education, which wasn't something that I was super excited about, but um, I was really surprised that I have um, Arabic speaking prof professors and I have um, Arabic typography classes that I can take. And um, yes, we did learn about you know, the Western um, history of Arabic, um, Ar not Arabic, <laughs> graphic design, but then also we were given the opportunity to work on projects um, that were related to Arabic typography. We had an amazing professor that we worked on many different uh, research projects. I actually had the opportunity to take a, an independent study with her and um, you, can, you can be honest here. No, I'm totally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think uh, I, w I had enough to, um, to be able to um, explore this, um, this field, and I'm very grateful for it. How about you guys? I think I, I, I agree with Shima that we've been uh, supported in every way possible, and um, Again, Basma has really pushed us forward and gives, has given us the opportunity to work in the field and, and get uh, the experience we needed. And I feel like I, w I wouldn't change a thing about the education we received. You feel? I wouldn't change a thing about the education we received. Well, there you go. <laughs> what about you? 
Sarah? Uh, I, would, I would say the same thing. Uh, for, me, um, for me, my interest was on basically, uh, was focusing on Orientalism and revisionist history of the Middle East. And uh, I, felt, I felt like when I was at VCU, I was giving the absolute freedom to, to dig whatever I want and say whatever I want. <laughs> Even okay. if it's maybe, I don't think it was problematic, but uh, I think uh, the work that I was focusing on, um, I, was, I was just trying to be honest with, uh, with our societies. And, uh, and I think, yeah, I think VCU and Basma Hamdi, our professor, <laughs> did, <laughs> did a pretty good job. And, um, Providing all of that, all of this to us. So, yeah. and I'd like to mention that we're also getting a lot of support with um, our uh, typography lab, type type Arabi, and um, we're, we're can, giving. Can you tell us what that is? It's basically um, a, a design platform where uh, we focus on preserving and, and celebrating Arabic typography. And who pays so, for that? VCU. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so we're, um, we're getting a lot of um, support uh, through that, which is, which is great. Great. There is one kind of like um, slightly spicy, controversial question I might ask, which is to say that the Arabic script and the Persian script, you know, are sometimes in this world we live in equated with violence, with, you know, acts of, um, you know, with countries that are uh, in conflict with the West, et cetera, et cetera. I need, I need not explain any further. Do you not think that maybe that this is hurting the world's or, you know, government's uh, desire to develop Arabic script further? Politics, you know? Um. Of course, I completely agree with you, and I think uh, we had that we had a rough year in 2016. Um, yeah. It was like, oh, I, I remember there was like this post. Someone was walking with a tote bag that had like an Arabic saying that was like basically nothing. It's just like say hi or something, and then everyone everyone got triggered. And uh, I think it was in New York, if I'm not mistaken. But but yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, Arabic la uh, the Arabic language was always paired with terrorism, I guess, because of the way it was perceived in the in the in the media, and this is something that Edward Say talked about many many years ago, and still uh, I would say that uh, little that have changed, and um, and this is why I think that we should. I mean, our people should care about the Arabic language first. And if it's being badly represented, then we should be the ones who represent it, at least, you know. And then hopefully it will change the perception uh, on the outside internationally. But, mm -hmm. yeah. And does anyone else have thoughts on the whole political angle? I feel like, um, I mean, we're from a country that doesn't give very good press, right? Yeah. That's right. um, it's 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 tricky. I understand um, what you mean when you say that it's it's usually associated with violence. But then, let's say a script like Nastaliq, it's it's beautiful. It's yeah. it's so poetic, and it's it's usually associated with uh, with Persian poetry, with Rumi, which is very popular around the world. And I feel like. Even though we have a lot of issues, maybe sometimes politics can't really ruin those, those, you know, this beautiful history that we have. Yeah, yeah no, it's cultural heritage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I don't think, and I, I don't, I don't think that uh, Arabic is uh, perceived as, you know, being a terrorist language only, but also. Uh, it could be, it's, it sometimes it gets perceived as like a very basic symbol language, almost uh, like, you know, like also I remember now a scene in a movie where they had like a script on the screen, uh, sorry, they had like Arabic uh, paragraph in the screen and literally the, the letters were reversed. So they didn't even care 
about yeah. re representing it properly. So, so we are either we are either uh, represented as terrorists, terrorists, or represented as like this like basic, um, not sophisticated language at all, which is not true, obviously. And <laughs> and uh, I think it's yeah, it still falls under um, the way the Middle East has been perceived, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, and there's like a lot of politics behind it. So, mm. any other questions from? The audience. Yes, please. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to ask was, and this is something this conversation I've had with you guys, uh, you know, uh, for a while now. Um, this uh, perception of designers and artists and uh, creative work in the Middle East, uh, sorry, in, in the Arab region, uh, it, it's very like people think it's very simple and it's a hobby type work. Like people don't take it very seriously, and. Uh, this whole idea that you you know you mentioned over here where they expect you to like you know do projects and you know like here make this flyer for me or here quickly like make a logo in like two days and you know these projects and they, you, what you get back is like exposure and things like that what is it that we can do to like you know change that like you know I, and that goes both for artists and you know designers uh, well, how, what is it that artists and designers can do to uh, you know change that uh, perception yeah, and this to be, I guess, taken more seriously? Or? Of course, taken more seriously, but also like, you know, uh, the m most importantly that artists and designers, they get compensated for what they're offering. Uh, you know, right. Which, I mean, which would feed into the creative economy, which is such an important thing in a place like uh, yeah, Doha. Yeah, because, because um, you know, Zainab was saying that oftentimes uh, they're asked to work for free, you know. Yeah, what can we do for, to, to raise the, the market appreciation or, or value of what you do? I think it kind of starts at an individual level, like as artists themselves, they can promote themselves and show the work that they do, but also be brave enough to refuse the projects that come to them and say, we're just gonna put you up for exposure and, and that's it, or maybe for a period of time they can take on projects that do offer exposure until they get to that level of being financially secure to say, no, I do not accept to work for you all these hours and, and not be compensated for that. And I think that this doesn't happen in every other like discipline. No one goes to an engineer and says, build me this whole building and I'll just take a photo of it and <laughs> that's all you get. And I think uh, oftentimes people forget that we do have degrees in what we do and it honestly shows in, in the work itself. And when we do show the work that we do and we show the detail that we, that we go into, how much we think about the letters and things like that, we, we are taken seriously and we are given compensation for what we do. Okay, I think we have about three and a half minutes left and I, I wanted to come back to you and say, um, obviously there's a lot of um, Arab and Iranian um, and Afghan uh, migration to all parts of the world. And don't you think that the, maybe um, migration to like immigrants in Europe and in, and in America and in you know, the major capitals of the West could be the vectors of change because they, they are going to be bringing their language or bringing their calligraphy, bringing Arabic graphic design into the mix. Do you not think that there's also that channel that could bring about change? What do you think, Shima? Yeah, um, I definitely agree. I mean, there are many designers who, who are out there um, and creating amazing um, Arabic typefaces. And they, they are, I'm, I'm specifically thinking of um, Wael Morbos, and he, he has a studio in, um, I would say, I'm not sure, New York. And he does a lot of um, really uh, strong um, Arabic typefaces, and and they're used in in Google and um, I guess IPA. I'm not sure, but yeah, definitely. Um, as long as we put our work out there, there is going to be um, a demand for it. Mm -hmm. It's just just go out there, <laughs> Zaina. Uh, I think I, I definitely would agree, agree with Shima. It's about showing the work and people, uh, there's a, a very visual distinction between good and bad work and I think that the, the audience is catching up on that and understanding that there is 
beautiful Arabic uh, fonts available out there, and they're just not selling for the alternative. Right. And I think there's also this uh, foundation in uh, the Netherlands called the Hat Foundation. Yes. Can one of you talk to me about that? Because it's dedicated to Arabic typography. Yeah. And I think it's led by Huda. I, I unfortunately can't spell her last name. Yeah. But uh, my experience with, with Huda was that I had, so I have a, a social media presence and I had recently submitted my work for an exhibition and she was on the curators who reviewed the work and accepted it. And so she's accepted uh, one of my pieces, which I'm very proud of. And I think that social media has opened up the, uh, the doors for people like us who are just starting to get the recognition that we need. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that'll open up the, the field here to more beautiful work. Well, it's great to end on a note of optimism. And congratulations to my three panelists for being such excellent speakers. Thank you.